Happy Sabbath. Feliz Sabido. Welcome to a new year. I hope that your celebrations were safe, but still fun. This year has got to be better than last year, doesn't it? You may ask that question, last year you thought 2020 would have been better. But the thing I can guarantee you is that if we stay with God, if we put our rest and our assurance upon him, we know that he will take care of us. Check out Romans 8.28 for that. I hope that this year will be better for you. And this year, we're starting with a series that Pastor Melissa and several other speakers will be giving us insights into the character of God. How much better to start a year by trying to know God better and understanding his character? So, um, as we look at that, she will start this week with the story about Elijah after the victory at Mount Carmel. But we know that if we always bring ourselves to try and understand God, he will reveal himself to us. Like he, did, like he does in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, where he says, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Let's learn something about our God in the next few weeks. Thank you for joining us. Happy Sabbath and happy holidays to everyone. Hope you're enjoying your vacation and your time with your family. Thank you for joining us and please sing with us.
I always thought of myself as a Christian. I mean, as I grew up, I went to Sunday school and I occasionally went to church when my parents did, but you know, we never did any of the regular things that now I know a Christian does, things like praying and reading the Bible and having worship together and going to church. But I still thought I was a Christian. And it wasn't really until I became a young adult, had finished university and, and was sort of out on my own. And, and I really started to search to try and find something that was missing. And I don't know if in my mind I, was, I knew that God was leading me, but as I look back, I can see so many instances where it was definitely God doing that. I can remember uh, as a young person living in the West End of Vancouver, having a pretty good life in my mind, going for a walk at lunch hour and buying a Bible, of all things, at the Canadian Bible Society. And I think I read a couple of pages and put it on the shelf until years later when I really needed it, at least in my mind. What really kind of really led me in looking towards God is I searched in different areas, went to different meetings, and I just never really clicked with me. But as I, as I searched, I found that I, I saw things in my life that were just obviously not right and headed in a good direction. The people I was hanging around with, who I had a lot of fun with, who I had a lot of relationships with, I could see... Uh, separations in the people who were married or who were couples, that people were not faithful, and that of every social interaction we had, drinking was the major thing that, that really brought everyone together. And it was on one of those occasions on a Sunday morning, recovering from a headache from the night before, and I was searching for something on television, probably some sports or something, and I recognized this guy, this uh, older guy who was on sometimes on some religious program. And it had a thing of a trailer for a Daniel seminar. And I hit me just like, wham, I had no reason not to go for that. That Bible I had bought years before and was up on a shelf gathering dust. I was thinking, oh, I can't go to that. Oh, I don't have a Bible. Oh, yeah, I do have a Bible. And it was really close to me, and I had no conflict with anything. We were planning on going drinking or anything. So I thought, well, I guess I should go. And it was amazing to me that they used the same type of Bible as I had bought years before. And we studied in the book of Daniel, and they showed how much history was involved in that. And it showed how God knew and shared with us through prophecy that he knows what's going on. That really grabbed me. And so, following the Daniel seminar, I continued with the revelation. And it just really drew me in. It changed my life so far as priorities and where you're headed. As I look back now, if I had not made that decision to come to the Lord... I can see that my life probably would have been a wreck. I probably would have ended up having a, a, an alcohol problem. I probably would have got married and divorced. And I probably would have had difficulty, in fact, I'm sure I would, within a particular job that I was in because there was a recession that happened a couple of years after that, that I would have been out. So I just see my past as God guiding me towards him. And I would suggest that for anyone, is if you keep your heart open and searching for God, God will not quit on leading you to where he wants you to be. He wants you to be in heaven with him, and he offers that to every one of us. I hope you continue to keep your heart open to him. Thank you.
our offering this week is for the local church budget. And before I give my pitch about that, first I want to say thank you to our members and the supporters who have supported the Abbotsford Church for our local mission and our outreach this past year in 2020. Although the treasurer doesn't have the final numbers for us, I know that people have been very faithful in contributing. And in a difficult year where most of the year we couldn't be together, we just thank you and we are amazed by your faithfulness. Thank you so much. You have blessed the work in Abbotsford, and I know that God will bless you. This year, we want to start off strong looking at the elements that we're having within our area here. Right now, the people who are in leadership positions with regard to outreach and with regard to Sabbath schools and every other aspect of what is happening in our Abbotsford Church are thinking about how they can improve this year, given the conditions. Hopefully, things will open up as the vaccine is more available. But irregardless of what may happen or of other things that will hit us, if you will faithfully contribute, not just in your funds, but in your volunteer hours and in your enthusiasm and your prayers, we know that God will bless us in ways that we have not seen before. Thank you for your goodness. I'll remind you there are four ways that you can send in your tithes and offerings to the church. You can go online and go on the uh, website and look for the online giving tab and click on that and you can follow the, the links from there. You can also send a check in to the church. Um, you could also drop it off at the church. There is a mail slot just in one of the outside doors. Um, you could also call the church if necessary, and one of us will be happy to come over and pick up your offering. Thank you so much for your faith, months. May God continue to bless you this year. Our opening hymn will be number 462, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Sure. boys and girls. Have you ever had someone pick on you? Well, Jan had a bully at school, and his bully's name, well, we'll call him Bruno. 
He was big and he was mean. And he had probably had hair growing on his back and his knuckles dragged the floor. He was just a really a mean kid. And he was a bully to a lot of people, but especially to Jan. And Jan had just gotten a brand new flashlight. This flashlight was really special because it was army green. It had a neat little angle on it that you could hold it like this and it would put the beam straight out. And it had a, had a neat little screw off cap so that you could change the lenses from clear to red to blue. And if you wanted to flash something in the night, you could use the red beam. And uh, it had a switch on it. And when it, you flipped the switch, it would turn the light on then there was a button you could push. And if you push that button in a sequence, you could tap out Morse code with your flashlight. It was just a really neat flashlight, and Jan loved his flashlight. He took it to school one day, and when he, when he went to school, after class, some of the kids gathered around him, and they said, oh, let's see your flashlight. And Jan proudly took it out and showed it around and showed him the lenses and showed how it was flashing and and Bruno was walking up and snatched it away from him and said, hey, let me see that. And Jan said, no, that, that's my flashlight. Well, Bruno didn't give it away, He'd give it back. He was, he was too big and too strong and class was gonna start again. So Jan had to go back into class. And he sat down in the front corner, which was where his spot was, and he sat in the front. And Bruno sat in the very back on the other side of the room. Well, Jan would look to the back and he would see Bruno back there turning the flashlight on and off and blinking it and unscrewing the cap and he was worried that his batteries would run out and he was worried that he might break one of the lenses and he was just worried. Well, he thought a little while and he couldn't concentrate in class and he decided that maybe God, he remembered that maybe God he, he takes care of the sparrows. He sees when they fall. He thought, well, if God cares about the sparrows, he wants me to be happy, and, and he's the one that, that got me this flashlight, and he'll take care of this flashlight. He thought, maybe I'll pray about this. And so he, he closed his eyes, and he prayed. He said, dear Father, this flashlight is, is your flashlight. You got this for me, and you care for me. Send the flashlight back to me. Well, next time he looked back, he saw another boy who was sitting right to the front and left of Bruno. He was keep taking a look at that flashlight, and he said, Hey, nice flashlight. Let me, let me see that flashlight. And Bruno said, Oh, okay. And he handed it to the boy. Now that boy was playing with the flashlight, so Jan started praying again. And the next time he looked back, the next boy had already asked for the flashlight. Need, need, need flashlight. Let, let me see that flashlight. And the boy said, okay, yeah, sure. And handed the boy to the front and left the flashlight. That flashlight, while Jan was praying, made a straight line all the way to the front left of the classroom to the boy that was sitting right back to the, the back right. Well, Jan thought, it's so close. I could just reach out and snatch it away from him. But he thought, no, no, God brought that flashlight this far. I think I can pray and God will take it the rest of the way. So he prayed again. And that boy behind him, he had the flashlight. He tapped Jan on the back of his shoulder. And he said to him, is this yours? And Jan said, thank you. God had answered his prayer. When Jesus was on this earth, he helped people who were troubled about things and worried about things. God cares about you, too. Remember, boys and girls, God sees your every need, and he loves you just as much as he took care of Jan's flashlight. He will take care of you. and
Please pray with me. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you on this first Sabbath of 2021 with great hopes and expectations for this year and great hopes and expectations of what you will do in our lives. Heavenly Father, we thank you for letting us come through the experiences of 2020. It has been difficult for many of us because of losses and, and setbacks and because of the separations we had. But hopefully things are looking better as we come towards the future. And particularly, we want to know you to, as our Savior, as our God, as our assurance for the future. So Heavenly Father, we pray that as we come into this year, please send your Holy Spirit to come into our hearts and our lives, to change us to the type of people that you know we can become as your children. Help us to grow as people. Help us to care for others, not just people in our family, but for those in our community. Help the Abbotsford Church and its members to be part of reaching out to the community and sharing the Christ who cares for every one of us. Thank you for leading us in this direction. We don't know all of the experiences that will happen, but we excitedly look forward to the way that you will bless us if we commit ourselves to serving you. Help us to read your word more. Help us to pray more earnestly. Help us to be prepared to lift someone's hand that needs some help. Help us to be involved where we are able. And we pray, Heavenly Father, as the Alpha and the Omega, you know how things will develop. We pray for your hand and all of the experiences that will come before us now in this new year. We expectantly look to see that great things will lead us in a way that we come closer and we can lift our eyes up expectantly to that day that we look to your soon return. 
Thank you for loving us. Thank you for encouraging people in every area. We ask for you to continue to bless us. And pass, pa, please bless Pastor Melissa and her message today as she begins the series so we can know you in a better way. Thank you for your love, Lord. In Christ's name, amen. I first want to just send my warm greetings to all those who are joining us uh, today via online, because that's really the only way we're worshiping right now. But I figure by the time you watch this, you'll already be in 2021, and it'll be a new year. So I want to wish you a year full of laughter and peace and strength, no matter what 2021 brings. We'll be starting a sermon series today that I believe is vital to the Christian walk. We will be answering the question, who is God and his character? You see, there's a difference between knowing about God and knowing him. When we get to know someone, we spend time with them. We learn about them from them, not from gossip or the internet, social media, or another person. Yes, what a trusted friend says does carry weight, but it doesn't compare with having your own relational experience with that person. Similarly, each of us are called to step into a relational experience with God. In fact, this is what he desires for us to do. When we look at the word of God, we see time and time again, there are men and women in the Bible that encounter God and God revealing himself to them. We have anywhere from like Adam to Hagar, Samuel to Job, David to Malachi, and then comes the very personal and very important uh, revelation of God through Jesus Christ. And all of these actions show us something very important. You see, God is deeply interested in humanity, and he wants us to truly know him, like to really, really know him, who he is and what he is about. There have been rumors and whisperings about who God is, and many are confused, and some don't even know what to think. So I hope that as you join us in this journey, we can do this together and discover his character, God's character, and we can have a clearer picture of who God is and what he is about. Our series will consist of several speakers, but all have been tasked to dig deeper into the word of God and share with us all so we can discover more about the character of God. So today... I'm going to start, and we're going to look at the story of Elijah the prophet. So let's read our scripture today. 1 Kings 19, 1 to 5. Now Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and how he had killed all the prophets with a sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me, and even more, if I do not make your life as a life as one of them, by tomorrow about this time. And he was afraid and arose and ran for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough now, O Lord, take my life for I am not better than my father's. Let's catch up to where this story leaves off. Elijah had done the whole altar and water and water and fire from heaven and had just finished killing the prophets of Baal by the hundreds. This was a triumph. All the people saw the power and might of God and the lack of power and might of Baal. Not to mention the drought had been called off and the rain, and rain had poured from the heavens onto the very parched land. Many hearts had turned to God, but Jezebel, Jezebel's heart was unchanged. She may have in fact hardened her heart even further as truth presented her, truth stared her in the face. So Elijah was used by God to show God's power his control over the elements. Many hearts turned to him. This should have been enough to strengthen him, to encourage Elijah, 
that God was in control, that God had been with him. However, this death threat of a really bitter lady fills Elijah with fear, and he runs for his life. Have you encountered a situation like this? Where God has shown himself to you so mightily, but one person or one circumstance comes along and then fear grips you tightly and you just want to run away? Elijah runs for his life. He just up and left. And he runs to a city in Judah. Now Judah at the time was not a safe city. But he keeps running. His fear is so potent and overwhelming that he runs for an entire day, probably not even stopping to rest, until he stops at a juniper tree, completely exhausted. I want to pause here, and I want to watch. I want you to watch with me God's actions. So, so far, God has been with Elijah, because without God, that fire wouldn't have come down from heaven and consumed the offering. God proved to every eye that saw that he's not only powerful but the one true god he had proven that he could control the elements which was a big deal because their gods they pray to for rain and etc god used fire and also rain to kind of show his control he had been with elijah so far so where is god while elijah is running you and i we're not immune to fear and just a few minutes ago, I was talking to my friends here about roller coasters. Do you like roller coasters, those on the other side of the screen? I know some of you are saying yes, some of you are saying mm, no. But I, I love them. When that roller coaster, you know the kind, goes tuck -a -tuck -a -tuck -a -tuck -a -tuck all the way to the top, and it's at that point where it's about to plummet, fear in the form of heebie-jeebies comes after me. And there's like this feeling of this lump in my throat of this expectancy of, Oh, goodness, I could die. And then it plummets straight down. That fear, maybe it should compel me not to go on roller coasters, uh, but, but I still love roller coasters. See, fear sometimes can help us to know when we're in a dangerous situation, a situation that's not safe and we have to exit. But when fear grips us so tightly that we can think of nothing else and it pulls us out, down into a dark place, when you're in that point, you can't recognize help. You can't recognize a solution if it was staring you in the face, an inch away from your face. Elijah's fear deposited him into depression, into a very dark place. My Bible says, both in the Hebrew and the English, verse 4 has an emphasis here. It says that he himself, okay? He himself, that's a double emphasis. Elijah was the one that was running. He himself chose that. It wasn't a thus says the Lord situation. Because depression embraced him like an old friend. And he gave way to discouragement and the desire to no longer live. He asked the Lord, Lord, please, I want to die. He doesn't want to go on. My Bible says that he says, oh, it's enough. I just can't handle it anymore. The risk is too great. The danger. There's so many unknowns. I'm afraid. I just can't handle these emotions. I just want this to be over. I'm not strong enough. I'm not worth it. Can you hear all that's going on in Elijah's heart? But we can't stop there. Sometimes people do choose to stop there. But there's more to the story. And there's more to your story if you're feeling that way too. Because the rest of this story, Elijah's story, shows us a lot about who God is. And it's important for us to notice. Verse 5 says that he lay down and passed out. I mean, he was exhausted, right? He had given up. I think I would have passed out too. I mean, it was a hard situation for him, for him to be in. but. Let's pause and think, where is God in this situation? God knew exactly where Elijah was the whole time. In fact, Proverbs 15 tells us the eyes of the Lord are in every place keeping watch. Elijah's fear prevented him from hearing 
or perceiving God. When we're down, we must look up. And then in Elijah's story, God shows up. The angels were sent to Elijah with a message of life and hope. This is Christ's method. First, the angels provide him with food, his physical needs. They had sympathy for Elijah. Food and water would restore his strength and restore his courage. And then a second time, God graciously provides for Elijah's needs. God was not only nourishing him physically, but you think about it, and the very presence of the angels there showed Elijah that God cared about him, that he was interested in him and his survival. When you and I go through situations that are tough, sometimes the enemy whispers in your ear that you are alone. But you are not. We are not. Faith in that case is believing God's presence to be with us here, even though I cannot feel it. You are not alone. Romans 8 tells us that nothing can separate us from the love of God as revealed in Jesus Christ. And Jesus came to this earth. We talked about it last week. Emmanuel, God is with us. If you haven't seen the Christmas program, it's beautiful. It's on our website. On that beautiful, silent night, God came as a baby. And Jesus came so that we would know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he would be with us until the very end of age. Now, there's an amazing aspect to this story. Um, this journey that was of Elijah's choosing um, happened. And what did God do? Did he stop him? He could have sent, a, I don't know, a cloud of something, built up a wall out of nothing. God could have scolded him and been like, where are you going? Stop. You got to turn around. But God didn't. He journeyed with him. Elijah lasted 40 days and 40 nights on the two meals that the angels provided for him in the desert. Sorry, where he was, sorry. Then he traveled in the desert. My notes say that this is the same desert that the Israelites wandered for 40 years. Kind of interesting, hey? And then he came to Mount Sinai. And in that mountain, he found a cave. Elijah found a place where he felt safe. And this is where God chooses to ask Elijah, what are you doing here? Now God knows, right? God knew why he was there, but he chose to have a conversation with Elijah like a friend would. Elijah defends himself and God decides to pass by. You know the story. Elijah's in the cave and then a strong wind passes by, breaking the rock. Must have been a scary sight. And then an earthquake shakes the ground. I'm sure that more of the mountain breaks. Then a fire. And then a gentle whisper. This is how the Lord chose to reveal himself to his servant Elijah. Now Elijah, the Bible says, covered his face because he instinctively recognized the presence of God. And his, and his ruffled spirit was calm. Elijah was compelled by the gentleness and peace that comes with being in the presence of the Lord. It is not by bringing fire from heaven, but the quiet work of the Holy Spirit that Elijah would later have the greatest result in the service of the Lord. And God gives Elijah new instructions. Elijah was a different man now. He was... He no longer needed the fire, the flashy shows, but instead he gently spoke life and hope into the life of the individuals he would encounter, and this produced lasting results. So let's recap here as I'm closing. Let, what have we learned about God's character in the story of Elijah? First, God showed his power through Elijah through fire and rain, okay? Amazing, miraculous event. Second, God didn't abandon Elijah even when Elijah gave up himself. He was done. God didn't abandon him. Third, God met Elijah's needs and gave him courage just when he needed it. Fourth, God did not stop 
Elijah from going on this journey that was long and rigorous, his basically running away, but continued to uh, be with him as he journeyed until Elijah reached a place that he felt was safe. And lastly, God calmed Elijah's fear, gave him hope and a renewed purpose just by being in his presence, in God's presence. God's character, this is what I learned from this story, is gentle, and he will not give up on you. We've been through a lot this year, haven't we? So I pray that you take courage and know that God will not abandon you. He wants you to have hope and to calm your fears. Take refuge in him. Just as Psalm 46 says, he is your refuge and your strength. And I hope that you will join us next week as we continue to discover more about God's character.
Pray with me. Heavenly Father, God, God, all-powerful and the one true God, we love you, God, and we thank you that you are so interested in each one of us, that you love us so much that your son came as a baby to grow up, to teach us, to reflect your character for us to have and to know and to learn about you more and more. God, we praise you that you are not bound by any object, but you are a God that can be with each of us personally and reveal yourself to us. We thank you that you are gentle and that you will not give up on us. You will not abandon us. So I pray, God, that as we start this new year, that we would um, make the decision, each of us, in our homes, wherever we are, God, that we would all decide to know you more, to know you deeply, to grow in relationship with you. Father, we don't know what this year holds, but we know that you are God, that you are in control, and that you can calm all of our fears and worries um, and all the unknowns, because we don't have to know because you do. We love you and we thank you for this year, 2020. And we look forward to being with you, walking through it with you. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.